What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plan. Today we got a really cool experiment that really has to do with which side of the node should you cut and what kind of effects does it have. Let's check it out. All right, this experiment is actually quite interesting with a, a pretty interesting surprise at the very end and it's very um, evident as to why and how things operate. But this experiment really is going to be what side of the node really matters and does it play any part in the actual propagation and new growth. So like all of my propagation experiments, we need a sacrificial plant. A lot of people complain that I use pothos because they call it too easy, but honestly, it's just super consistent. And you'll see how we suffer because we didn't choose pothos. But anyways, it's Monster Esqueleto, and we just need a huge segment of nodes. All of these are going to be leafless just to kind of make things consistent because some of the leaf sizes were different and whatnot. And I just had a very bare patch from letting this thing grow like crazy. So I'm going to be cutting three types of cuttings. Uh, the first set is going to be one where the actual growth point is going to be the shortest part of the actual cut. And then the like, I guess you would call it like the previous, this would be closer to the plant. That part will be the longest. We'll do the exact opposite where we're going to cut short the side that was facing the plant. And we're going to leave the longer side be the side with the actual growth point, And that would be towards like the end of the actual plant. And then the third one is going to be just half and half. We're just going to see if it matters, if it has the same size on both sides of the actual node. I have talked about it in the past, just trying to keep things a little more consistent. So the data or evidence is a little more compelling instead of it being a little looser. So I try to cut everything to about the same length. Now it's going to be hard because this is an organic thing, so I can't make it perfect. But I try to measure everything, get the cuts pretty much the same, have like the leftover parts pretty equal. And then I sort of sorted them out by thickness and we even weighed them so i tried to make sure we were starting with a similar amount of like weight if that makes sense i'm not going to weigh them later because i don't really care about the well it, it could matter a little bit but you'll see that the evidence is more compelling than weight would really give us so just to get us an equal starting point that's what we're doing here once i got everything like trimmed and as close as i can get it to being equal we're going to put them all in the same bin with the same substrate it's just a sphagnum moss perlite mix and I'm just going to keep it damp. And if it dries out, I'll make sure it's wet. A lot of people ask about that. But I'm just going to place all these nodes in here in a nice line so we can keep them sorted as we progress through time. And then I'm going to set these under grow lights and just leave them be for a while. All right, so about a month has passed. We can open this thing up and see if there is any early progress. I am a little disappointed because right off the bat, you can see there's almost none. This is what makes me wish I just chose pothos because we usually get results much quicker. But I wanted to switch it up for you guys. So looking at the first section, this would be the one where we preserved the part that's actually closer to the plant. So this would be like behind the node. Um, they're not really doing much at all. You can see they're just looking the same. No rot, really. Again, that's why I love those razor cuts because it's so clean works so well but nothing really too crazy is happening here skipping over to the one where we actually have more of the length which would be like with the growth point so it would be on the growth point side you can again see not much there is a little bit of activation on a few of them it looks like the growth point is starting it's a little more like um longer by like millimeters here but still there is some progress but then skipping ahead to the one with equal parts on both sides these ones are actually a little bit further i would say there's been some actual growth again millimeters but you can see a lot of them have actually rooted so i would say there's already some plus points for that good to see that that's happened we are going to let these grow for months and months and months and really keep an eye on them but let's quick take a look at today's video sponsor Today's video sponsor is Landguard Garden Beds. They have been awesome and sponsored us in the past, and they are sponsoring this video today. This is fantastic because you actually get to see updates on the garden beds that I've set up in multiple locations, and it just gives you an idea of how well they work. I set this one up at my parents' house because they had an old rundown garden bed system, so you can really see the transformation. It's really easy to set up, and I do have an entire dedicated video on how to set this thing up if you are interested on the channel, but for now, I'll just show you a quick rundown here, and then we will get to what it looks like now in present day. My parents planted a variety of plants, some peppers, some lettuce, tomatoes, and they were smart enough to use like tomato cages, which I did not use in my setup. You can see those updates in some other videos that I have posted, but theirs have done a really good job at containing the tomatoes. And you can see the tomatoes look fantastic. They're lively and they are really producing a lot. They couldn't keep up with the rate in which they were producing. So we were giving them out to everybody. 
When I first received these, I was a little skeptical to see like how long these things would actually hold up and look good for. And so far, after months and months of use, they still look fantastic and they look like they did the day I set them up. So I'm glad to see that. And again, they really are doing a great job. The harvests have been really good and you can see the plants look really healthy. Another really nice thing about having dedicated beds is they really do help with the weeding. You don't get as many weeds in these things because they're just easier to contain and they're not like right on ground level with everything else. So the spread is much less. Besides functional, it's actually quite a visual upgrade compared to what they previously had at my parents' house, so it does look fantastic. If you guys are interested, there will be links in the description. Like I said, there is a whole dedicated video about these on the channel, so check it out. Alright, so now four months has passed since we started this experiment, and we can see a single leaf, which is kind of nice to see. There's also a little fern in there, which makes me wonder, are spores growing in my house? I don't know. But looking over at the first two sections, you can see not a tremendous amount has happened with both the front and the back half nodes. You can definitely see some of the growth has sort of started. It's getting a little plump. Some may have one or two roots, but it's nothing really to write home about. And I'm shocked at how slow these plants are to propagate because it's been four months. Usually with pothos and other things, it's really fast, which is why I like to choose those plants because it's great for experiments, but still interesting to try this one. With the ones with dual sided, you can definitely see that there has been a lot more growth. Uh, definitely a full leaf, which is farther than anything else can be. But it's still not tremendously farther ahead than the other ones. I would say so far the worst have definitely been the growth point um, side being cut short. And the second best is the growth point side being long. And the, the best best so far is going to be the double sided ones. They've just done much better. But we're going to set this aside and check on it later. And by later, an entire 10 months has gone by. I really wanted to let these grow out to get some actual results because it's taking forever. This will be the last time I ever use Escaletto as an actual propagation experiment plant because, oh my gosh, it has been really slow. In fact, I think there's more ferns in here than Escaletto propagations, which is pretty crazy. At this point, though, I am going to rip everything out of here because this is going to be the end of the experiment. I think we've let things go long enough and we do have some pretty neat results. So I'm going to get everything out so we can take a look at roots, what has happened if there's been rotting, how much growth is there, and we'll just sort of see what's what. So looking at the very first section, now this is going to be the one where we did lop off the growth point side and left the previous point side. That would be closer to the plants, if that makes sense. They are doing okay. Two of them did not really do anything, but the remaining three actually did produce some leaves. One was kind of halfway there, but two of them at least got some actual leaf growth. So they didn't do terrible. A lot of them have roots, and so they're not looking bad, but also... For 10 months, it's a lot poorer than I expected. Now, looking at the exact opposite ones, and that being the actual growth end was left longer, and the part that's facing the actual like mother plant would be cut shorter, you can see that the results are not that much better. I want to say these are slightly better, just because the ones that do have leaves are a little bit more robust looking, a little healthier, and I think they're a little further along. But there is two nodes that just didn't even start, so it's pretty darn similar to the first pile, and I think if I put the piles side by side, you would struggle to tell which one was different based on the growth patterns because they are just that similar. So really, we're not seeing that many results. Looking at the final pile, this would be the one where we just left equal sides on both sides of the node. You can see these are leagues ahead of the other two piles. I mean, they just did so much better. And this is quite interesting. And as I look over them, I'm seeing a pattern. And I'm also wondering if you saw the pattern as well. The interesting thing I'm seeing is all the growth point that is like in front of the node, which would be like going towards the growth tip has all rotted out and been used up, which is very interesting. And all the parts of the plant that are like pointed towards the mother plant or like where it was cut from are all maintained and still green. My guess for this behavior is anything that's after the growth point is just used up for energy because it knows it no longer needs that because there was a cut at that point, which is why the node activated. But anything prior to, it doesn't seem to consume that for energy compared to how much it's consumed the front part, which is interesting. We did see this with the previous batch that where we left that it was much more yellow than the first batch where it was only the like mother plant connected tissue if that makes any sense so i guess the interesting thing that we've learned from this experiment is obviously having like plant matter on both sides of the nodes is way more helpful than cutting one shorter than the other and the other cool thing is if you start to see rot on the growth end of like the old node i wouldn't worry too much about that because it might not even be rot it might just be the plant consuming that part for energy because it knows it no longer needs it However, if you see a bunch of rot starting on like the 
the inner part, the part that was connected to the mother plant, maybe you want to set some panic in because that might mean some bad things. But this was just a really interesting result, seeing how the plant consumes one half versus the other. I love these kind of experiments that tell us what works best, but also shows us how the plant acts. I think this is a really neat discovery, and I'm sure a lot of you already maybe have recognized this within your plants, but I did not realize how much it will consume that front part that it no longer needs and how much it will maintain that previous part. So that was just a very interesting discovery. Well, that pretty much sums up that experiment. I thought it was really cool to see the end results. I loved learning that the plants actually consume that like post-cut material way sooner than the pre-cut. That is pretty interesting to see. Um, I did not know that they had a preference for where they're gonna start stealing nutrients from. And it also kind of gave me an idea that I don't need to worry if I see a little bit of rot starting on that post-cut side, just because the plant's gonna consume that anyways, and it's not gonna matter for a very long time. So if you see any on the pre-cut side, then you might wanna panic a little bit, but honestly, I never panic when I see the rot. It usually just handles itself. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that experiment. And as always, may your plants go strong and healthy. Keep experimenting. And I'll see you next time.